Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about rhinosporidiosis. Rhinosporidiosis is a fungal granuloma. This fungal granuloma is caused by the fungus Rhinosporidium seaberry. Rhinosporidium seaberry is seen in southern states of India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. So guys, what is rhinosporidiosis? It is a fungal granuloma. This fungal granuloma, it is caused by rhinospodi uh, rhinospodium seaberry and it is found in the southern states of India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. This fungus is acquired through the contaminated water of the ponds which has been contaminated by the animals. It is frequented by animals, the feces, the waste and everything of the animals which leads to the fungal growth. This fungus is affecting the nose, nasopharynx. It is not confined to the nose and the nasopharynx. It is also affecting the lip, palate, conjunctiva, epiglottis, larynx, trachea, bronchi, skin, vulva and vagina. It is yet it is not possible to culture this fungus or to transfer the disease to the experimental animals. So it is difficult to culture the disease. It is not actually not possible to culture this fungus. You cannot culture this fungus in the lab nor you can transfer it to the experimental animals for the studies. So it is just found in the contaminated water of the ponds. So guys, what is rhinospodiosis? It is a fungal granuloma. Granu granuloma is nothing but the area of the inflammation. It is the infiltrations take place. After the infection, the granuloma formation, this is a fungal granuloma. Okay, the fungus is causing a granuloma. Now let us see the clinical features. The symptoms, a patient suffering with rhinosporidiosis will present with the blood-tinged nasal discharges, nasal stuffiness and also the frank epistaxis is found in them. The nasal discharge is blood-stained. The people will have nasal stuffiness. It's like an obstruction in the nose and frank epistaxis will be there. Now let us look at the nasal findings. A leafy pink to purple polypoloidal mass attached to the nasal septum. So you see here it is a polypoidal mass and it is attached to the nasal septum. You can see in the first picture very beautifully given. It's gross but then uh, for the understanding it's nice. Uh, so you can see it is a leafy pink to purple polypoidal mass. It is attached to the nasal septum or the lateral wall of the nose and it will extend into the nasopharynx and hang behind the soft palate. From the nose it is going to the nasopharynx and then hanging in the soft palate. The surface of the mass is studded with the white dots that is nothing but the sporangia of fungus. You can see here in this picture they have given rhinosporidiosis and the white dots are nothing but the sporangia. These white dots given here are nothing but the sporangia. Okay. The surface of the mass is studded with the white dots, the sporangia of the fungus. The mass is very vascular and bleeds easily on touch. So the clinical features are clear. We saw that it is a polyploidal mass. It is pink to purple in color. Where is it attached? To the nasal septum and it is going extending to the nasopharynx and hanging behind the soft palate. And the mass is going to be stud with the white dots. It is very vascular and it is bleeding. Guys, uh, sporangia is nothing but a sac-like structure where they store the spores basically. So here uh, the rhinospodiosis is acting like a sporangia where, the, uh, sto uh, where it is storing the spores. Okay. Sorry, and now we go to the diagnosis. In the diagnosis, biopsy is done. In biopsy, the sporangia, I told you, which is containing the spores, the oval or round in shape, the sporangia is going to be oval or round in shape, and it is filled with the spores which are bursting through its chitinous wall. 
so we see the chitinous wall which is found in the body of the insects and all same with the same uh, it is a polysaccharide material this chitinous wall will be present and these spores are bursting out through the chitinous wall a small sample of the abnormal tissue of the rhinospodiosis rhinospodiosis is taken for the biopsy now how do you treat this rhinospodiosis surgical surgically what do you do the complete excision of the mass with a dithermy knife and cauterization of its base so here they are talking about a dithermy knife this dithermy knife will have a water jet function uh what happens this will enable the injection into the submucosal area so that the knife can immediately after cutting uh, the uh, thing it can clean up there and there then and there the water jet function is there okay so we use the dithermy knife and then cauterization cauterization it is often used in surgery to remove the harmful tissues or unwanted tissues so you cauterize uh, cauterize that is you burn off the thing or uh, you, you excision is done with the dithermy knife and then what you doing you are cauterizing the base so that the blood vessels are burned and it is uh, completely uh, cured recurrence is uncommon once uh, you are cured with the surgery the recurrences are quite uncommon medical drugs are not effective just by tablets you cannot cure this the drugs are not effective but dapson has been tried with some success so the dapson drug can be uh, used for certain extent okay it can help so this is uh, the treatment with this we come to an end of rhinospodiosis hope you understood if you have any doubts put it in the comment section and if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe